Hello, this is a refresher lesson on solving equations. Uh, many of you have been solving equations for a while, but it's always good to have a refresher. So we're going to start with this. If you guys will go ahead and pause your screen and take a couple minutes to try out these four warm-up equations, and I'll show you the answers here in a, check, in, in a second just to check to see how you did and, uh, and, and go from there. We'll see how you guys did with that. All right, so pause your screen. Okay, hopefully you had enough time to do that. Here are the answers for numbers one, two, three, and four, just to make sure that you did those correctly. All right. Well, I'm going to work through a couple of examples with you, but before that, I just want to remind you of a couple of things for our steps for solving. One of the things that you're going to hear me say a lot is the reverse order of operations or the opposite order of operations. Um, and we get so excited about jumping in and, and solving right away. But it is really, really, really important for you guys to make sure that you're paying attention and you're simplifying. That's combining like terms wherever you can to try to condense both sides of this equation to make it as simple and as few steps as possible in order to get our solution. So simplifying and using the reverse order of operations when we solve. Remember, the order of operations is PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, whichever one comes first, and then addition and subtraction, whichever one comes first as we, re as we uh, read from left to right. So we got to make sure when we're solving, we do the reverse of that. So addition and subtraction, we'll, we will get rid of first, then we would get rid of multiplication and division, then we would get rid of exponents, and then we would get rid of parentheses. So in a lot of ways, we work backwards. All right, here we go. First example that I'm going to work out in front of you. And feel free to pause your screen at any time, work it out, and then check and see how I do it to compare how you do it. And remember, there's a lot of different ways to do some of these problems. So if I do something different than you would do it, but we get the same answer, that's probably still okay. All right, so here we go. Let's get going. We're going to get go ahead and solve for x. That means I want to get x by itself. All right, reverse order of operation says that I want to get rid of this first. So I'm going to get rid of subtraction. So how do I quote unquote unsubtract? I'm going to do the inverse operation, which is add. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides of this equation. Now we add to both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. Now I know you've heard your teachers say keep it balanced, but let's just make sure we know what that means. According to this symbol right here, that's an equal sign. That means everything on the left is the exact same thing as everything on the right. So if I change something on the left and I don't change it on the right, then they're no longer equal and this would no longer be a true statement. So the idea of balance, whatever I do to the left, I have to do to the right, is to make sure this stays equal. So here we go. 3x, and I don't, I'm not doing anything to it, so I'll just bring it down. But then negative 9 plus 9 is 0. So that's where this idea of canceling out, because if those two things add up to 0, that no longer affects 3x. Okay, 24 plus 9 is 33, and now I'm down to one last step before I could get x by itself. Now remember, 3 jammed up next to x means multiply. So 3x is 3 times x. Well, how do I unmultiply? I divide. So I need to divide both sides by 3. I'm going to use division bars, make it look like a fraction. But do remember that that bar right there means divide. So we want to make sure you guys don't forget that. Well, 3x divided by 3 3 divided by 3 is 1. So this is the same as 1x, but because we're trying to get x by itself, 1x is the same thing as x. So typically you won't see 1x. You'll just see the x. So we can say that that's isolated. Again, one more time, 3 divided by 3 was 1. 33 divided by 3, that is 11. And now simplified, x is by itself. And we have solved, and x is equal to 11. So hopefully you guys agree with what I did there, and that makes sense to you. 
We're going to try one more example. Or another example, I should say. I have a few for you. Keep in mind that you can pause your screen at any time and try out the example before you see me do it. All right. Now we've got an additional step. Right here, we've got some like terms that we need to simplify with. So going all the way back to what we talked about at the beginning of this video, we need to simplify before we start our solving process. Okay. Well, 4x and 2x are like terms because they both have an x. 8 is not a like term because it doesn't have an x. And 24 is not even on the same side. So 24 stays completely separate for what we're doing over here on the left side. That's a mistake I see often. 4x minus 2x leaves us with 2x's. So we're going to have 2x plus 8 is equal to 24. And now we're ready to start solving our equation. Reverse order of operations means I need to get rid of addition first. How do I unadd? I subtract. Making sure I stay balanced, I subtract 8 from both sides. 8 minus 8 is 0. 2x is going to now be equal to 24 minus 8 or 16. All right. 2x is not quite x by itself, so I need to get rid of that 2. 2 jammed, next, two jammed up next to the x. 2x means multiply. How do I unmultiply? I divide. I'm going to make sure I divide both sides by 2. The 2's cancel out because 2 divided by 2 is 1. x is equal to 8. And now we've solved for x. Okay. Let's try this guy out. Got a little bit of the distributive property happening here. Notice that 2 jammed up next to our parentheses still means multiply. But when I multiply, I need to make sure I multiply everything by that 2. So it's not enough just to multiply the 3x. I need to also multiply the 9 as well. So it's definitely worth your time to go ahead and write it out and not try to skip any steps or do it in your head. So here we go. Nothing has been multiplied or, or done to 12. We're going to leave that just like it was. But now 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 9 is 18. And 60, nothing has happened to it. It's on a different side. Leave it alone just like it was. Now we can notice that we've got some like terms here and here. How do we know they're like terms? They actually don't have an x this time. They don't have a variable. So we can actually put those together into one constant number instead of having to keep them three different parts. So 12 plus 18 is 30. So now I've got 6x plus 30 equals 60. Keep in mind that if you would have written, instead of what I wrote, 30 plus 6x is equal to 60, that's the exact same thing because addition is commutative and you can rearrange the order and it means the exact same thing. I'm just in the habit of years of doing this, of having my variable in front of my constant, but it does not matter. If you don't like it, you don't have to do that. So I'm going to keep on going here. And notice that I have the x on the left side. And I want to get that variable by itself. So that means I want to get rid of the addition. So how do I add? I subtract. So 6x plus 30 equals 60. Subtract 30 from both sides. Those cancel. 6x is equal to 30. Just a reminder, when I say they cancel, it means they add up to 0. 6 jammed up next to x means multiply. So 6 times x is what I need to get rid of. So how do I unmultiply? I divide. Divide both sides by 6. The 6 is canceled. Now, why do the 6 is canceled? They don't add up to 0, but 6 divided by 6 is 1. And 1 times x is x. So when I say they cancel, it means that's no longer affecting my variable. So then 30 divided by 6 is 5, and we've solved that equation. All right, let's do one more example with you here. And I'd love for you to pause your screen and try this one before I go through it. But again, keep in mind what we talked about with distributing as well as combining like terms or simplifying. All right, so here we go. I need to make sure I distribute, but I love 
throw in problems like this at you guys because it's where a lot of mistakes happen. People will focus on that three and say, oh, I need to multiply by that three, but it's actually a negative three. So I've actually had students rewrite the problem so that they don't make this error as plus a negative three instead of minus. And mathematically, it's the exact same thing, but it sometimes keeps us from making some careless mistakes and forgetting that negative. So this is a strategy that you might want to try. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative three to both pieces, meaning I'm going to multiply. So here we go. 30 was not affected, but now I've got negative three times four X, which is negative 12 X, negative three times six, which is negative 18. What happens there is people forget that negative and they don't end up getting both pieces negative there in that middle. All right, 36 has not been affected. It's on a different side. Now I'm looking to combine like terms. And both that 30 and this negative 18 are like terms. So I can add those two things together. 30 minus 18 or 30 plus a negative 18. Same thing. Either way, it's going to give me a 12. So I've got negative 12x plus 12 because 30 minus 18 was 12 equals 36. Now I'm just going to go through my two steps of the equation here. Reverse order of operations. Subtract 12 in order to unadd. Negative 12x. Those cancel. 36 minus 12 is 24. Last step. Don't forget your negative. Negative 12x is negative 12 times x. So I'm going to divide in order to get rid of that negative 12. Keep in mind, you don't want to divide by negative 12x because then your everything cancels and you won't have a variable to solve for. Negative 12s, they, negative 12 divided by negative 12 is 1. So we say that they cancel because they're no longer affecting x. And 24 divided by negative 12 is negative 2. And there you have it. We have solved. If you have any questions about that, ask your teacher or come up with... Uh, Whatever way you use to communicate, thank you for listening. Good luck.